Soros and his minions are sore losers. They can't believe what's happening because of the fact that they lost an election they weren't supposed to lose. Washington, D.C. Billionaire globalist George Soros is meeting with a number of Democratic mega donors and various party elites at a three-day strategy session in Washington, D.C. to plot methods to usurp President-elect Donald Trump's agenda. Well, after all, that's what they want to do. They don't want leaders who they have not chosen. And the people have spoken, they don't like that. In addition to Soros, House Minority Leader Nancy Pelosi, Senator Elizabeth Warren, and Representative Keith Ellison, in consideration to be next DNC chair, are among the key Democrats expected to attend, according to Politico. The annual closed-door conference, which kicked off on Sunday and sponsored by the Democratic Alliance Donor Club, Democracy Alliance was created by Soros after John Kerry lost the 2004 presidential election and annually funnels millions of dollars towards left-wing projects. According to the report by the Daily Caller, the organization dictates, it dictates that it's more than 100 members donate at least $200,000 a year to approved groups, a la Planned Parenthood and Media Matters, with the ultimate aim of mobilizing voters. Though Democracy Alliance has raised over $500 million in the past 11 years, operatives noted that issues traditionally favorable to Democrats failed to pull support away from Trump in this year's election. Maybe that had to do because of Hillary's lies and crimes, and even her health. Going back to the article, Therefore, Soros and other Democratic leaders used this year's summit to call for a shift in strategy in order to oppose Trump and the Republican-controlled government. In other words, the democratic system that is in play in the United States is under attack by the, the Soros group and his minions. For most unfamiliar with Soros, he utilizes a vast number of progressive organizations affiliated with Soros Open Society Foundations. Soros-affiliated organizations across the world are deeply connected to various color revolutions, the Arab Spring, and a number of other political uprisings across the world. Although democracy promoted, the promotion is the stated mission in reality, the many Soros-linked organizations operate to forward the Western globalist globalist agenda, often working to foment dissident and revolution. According to a report in Eastern Outlook, New Eastern Outlook, the totality of what is revealed in the three hacked documents, the hacked documents show that Soros is effectively a puppet master pulling most of the strings in Kiev, Ukraine, where they still have a civil war going on, for example. Soros Foundation's Ukraine branch, International Renaissance Foundation, has been involved in Ukraine since 1989. His International Renaissance Foundation, IRF, doled out more than $100 million to Ukrainian NGOs two years before the fall of the Soviet Union, creating the preconditions for Ukraine's independence from Russia in 1991. Soros also admitted to financing the 2013-2014 Maidan Square protests that brought the current government into power in Ukraine. Soros' foundation were also deeply involved in the 2004 Orange Revolution that brought the corrupt but pro-NATO Viktor Yushchenko into power with his American wife who had been in the U.S. State Department. In 2004, just weeks before Soros's International Renaissance Foundation had succeeded in getting Viktor Yushchenko as president of Ukraine, Michael McFall wrote an op-ed for the Washington Post. McFall, a specialist in organizing color revolutions, who later became U.S. ambassador to Russia, revealed. Did Americans meddle in the internal affairs of Ukraine? Yes, the American agents of influence would prefer different language to describe their activities, 
democratic assistance, for, for, for example, democratic promotion, civil society support, etc. But their work, however labeled, seeks to influence political change in Ukraine. Anyone familiar with the history of the Soros Open Society Foundations in Eastern Europe and around the world since the late 1980s will know that his supposedly philanthropic, quote, democracy building, unquote, projects in Poland, Russia, or Ukraine in the 1990s allowed Soros, the businessman, to literally plunder the former communist country's wealth, according to the new Eastern Outlook. During the 2016 presidential cycle here in the United States, Soros committed $25 million to the unsuccessful presidential campaign of the Democratic Party's Hillary Clinton. Per the standard Clinton operating procedure, this was indicative of the symbiotic relationship of favors between the billionaire George Soros and his array of political puppets across the globe, one of them being Hillary Clinton. Politico reported, the meeting is the first major gathering of the institutional left since Trump's shocking victory over Hillary Clinton in last week's presidential election. And if the agenda is any indication, liberals plan full-on trench warfare, full-on trench warfare against Trump from day one. Some sessions deal with gearing up for 2017 and 2018 elections while others focus on thwarting President-elect's 100-day plan, which the agenda calls, quote, a terrifying assault on President Obama's achievements and our progressive vision for an equitable and just nation, end quote. Yet the meeting also comes as many liberals are reassessing their approach to politics and the role of the Democrat Democracy Alliance, or DA, as the club is known in democratic finance circles. The DA, its donors and beneficiary groups over the last decade have had a major hand in shaping the institutions of the left, including by orienting some of its key organizations around Clinton and by basing their strategy around the idea that minorities and women constituted a so-called rising American electorate that could tip elections to Democrats. As I'm reading this article, of course, I'm really bothered by what George Soros is doing to the United States. And of course, Obama is aware of this. Hillary Clinton is aware of this. The Democratic Party is aware of this, that this man is a globalist. He's out to create chaos in every country he puts his organizations into. The man is an American citizen and he's trying to destroy the democratic system that is in play and being used in our country of the United States. And to, many, to the eyes of many, he is already a traitor. Going on with the article, the Democracy Alliance has blanketed liberal groups and candidates with over $500 million since George Soros co-founded the group in 2005 to forward a very specific neoliberal globalist agenda. On Sunday, Gary LaMarche, president of the Democratic Alliance, told donors that a recalibration was in order for the Democratic Party. Quote, you don't lose an election you were supposed to win with so much at stake without making some big mistakes in assumptions, strategy, and tactics, end quote. LaMarche said, according to prepared remarks, he approved to Politico. In the wake of widespread protests and rioting, the billionaire globalist George Soros was immediately implicated in the wave of protest by alternative media, which is true, he is implicated, as Soros-affiliated group, group MoveOn.org organized most of these rallies, which have turned violent, and they're still ongoing violent. Soros has a track record of usurping states in an effort to forward his neoliberal globalist agenda, under the guise of democracy promotion. Where it comes to George Soros, the will of the people comes secondary to forwarding his neoliberal globalist ideology. The man has many homes throughout the world. He is, however, an American citizen. I don't understand why they don't just issue 
an international arrest warrant for him from the side of the United States and have him arrested for treason. I leave a link below for you for this from the Free Thought Project on the Daily Sheeple. Thank you.